Let's catch up with Labor's Matt Thistlethwaite now. He joins me via Skype from his uh, wonderful electorate of Kingsford Smith. I've got to start with the beaches. Uh, Matt, you're close to um, Maroubra Beach uh, uh, on the Sydney's uh, eastern and southeastern beaches. They were reopened uh, the other day. Now the iconic Bondi Beach is to be opened next week with uh, Bronte and Clovelly. This is a big issue around the country. Victoria's still got beaches closed. Uh, is this a good move? Yeah, g'day, Chris. Um, well, we saw a month ago that the beaches around my area were closed down and, and for good reason. We saw those ridiculous scenes on Bondi Beach where people weren't abiding by the social distancing rules that have been put in place by the state government. Um, uh, I think that there's probably uh, a correlation between uh, what happened there and the fact that Waverley and Randwick were hotspots for infections around COVID-19. And the councils acted accordingly and closed those beaches. They've been closed for a month. Randwick's taking a very cautious approach um, to reopening the beaches. They've been opened over the last couple of days, subject to very, very strict conditions about social distancing. And I was down at Maroubra this morning. I had a jog along the promenade. And there's barricades up everywhere. There's only certain access points onto the beach. The beach inspectors were there making sure that people knew the rules and there were announcements over the loud hailer at the beach of, of, and warning people to abide by the social distancing rule. So I said to everyone in an email in my community yesterday that the key to the beaches remaining open, Chris, is locals abiding by the social distancing rules. And we've got some warm weather coming up this weekend, so there's going to be a test for everyone. If we can all abide by those social distancing rules, then the beaches will remain open for exercise and enjoyment. Yeah, with the uh, Bondi beaches, Bondi and Bronte, they're not going to open on weekends just during the week. Don't you think some of this stuff is just over the top, though? I mean, you're talking about uh, almost a fortress mentality there, the way you're controlling it and warning people. I believe over loud hailers at, uh, at uh, Coogee Beach, they've been warning people to move on and the like. I mean, a bit of common sense, surely. Well, Chris, the thing about COVID-19 is we've seen how rapidly it spreads and the damage that it can do. Yeah, and we've and done a good job. We've done a good job in this country. And we have done a good job because of the social distancing rules that we've put in place. And as I said, Randwick and Waverley are hotspots in terms of the rates of infection. And I think that uh, broadly the community is now used to the new social distancing norms. Uh, they're abiding by them and they're doing the right thing. And it's great to see people having access to the beach for exercise. And there was a fair few people down there this morning swimming, running and swimming uh, and surfing, sorry. And uh, we just want to make sure that people continue to abide by those regulations and use the beaches for that purpose. Don't hang around for sunbaking. Don't hang around to socialise. Uh, just get your exercise done and get out of there and the beaches will remain open. Yep, no sunbaking. That's why I stumbled across uh, some topless sunbakers uh, in a park near the beach the other week. This is changing people's behaviour in some pretty strange ways. Uh, do you support uh, the Morrison government? Do you say that they've done a good job in leading this national response? Look, broadly, we've been supportive of the actions that the government has taken. In fact, we've suggested a lot of them. The, the wage subsidy, JobKeeper was a suggestion from the Labor Party backed by the union movement to protect workers' jobs and, importantly, to maintain that connection between employers and employees so that when we're through this, Chris, we can kick-start the economy as quickly as we possibly can. So we think broadly that they've done a good job, but the approach that we've taken is to support legislation, but where there have been holes, to offer suggestions. And a classic example of that uh, is around casuals and JobKeeper allowance around people who are on temporary visas in, in terms of them accessing JobKeeper, the childcare changes that have been made, there have been a few holes in that. So we've been trying to be as constructive as possible and work with the government to make sure that these uh, reforms that have been put in place are as effective as possible and ultimately see us through this disastrous period at the moment. Now, as you would well know, even before the coronavirus hit us, uh, there was a lot of concern about uh, economic growth in this country, whether we needed to do more as a nation in economic reform to try and engender stronger growth. Uh, and now the, even the, the Reserve Bank uh, Governor is suggesting that is the case, that coming out of this is going to be even more critical for us to attract investment, to generate growth, uh, growth to lift productivity. 
Are you worried about what might be coming in terms of taxation and industrial reform attempts from the government? Well, I am concerned about comments like those of Matthias Cormann, where they're talking about uh, massive deregulation um, and wholesale changes around workplace relations. Chris, I believe that the key to Australia's economic success over the last 27 odd years has been the foundation that was laid by the Hawke and Keating governments, principally through the economic summit that took place in 1983, where the government brought together business, the union movement, welfare agencies, church groups, and they came up with a set of policies that were about increasing competition, openness in the Australian economy, deregulation in certain areas. Exactly, as I was going to say, some of that involved deregulation. It wasn't all deregulation, but a lot of it was deregulation, and that's what frees up an economy, is deregulation. In fact, during this crisis, we've seen some of the regulation around small business and other industries dropped to help people find a way around the economic slowdown, and it's worked. People are sensible. It's worked. Shops have been able to open longer, uh, uh, change their, the, the way their licensing ar arrangements uh, uh, are uh, obeyed, and um, we've seen people find a way. Well, the key to that, Chris, I think, is cooperation, um, and that was the hallmark of the Hawke and Keating government, that they brought along business, they worked with the union movement, um, and there were trade-offs made. Uh, around things like the Prices and Incomes Accord, which st established enterprise bargaining, established superannuation in Australia. And that's been the fundamental key to our success over the course of the last quarter of a century. And we'd be encouraging the government to take the same approach this time. So to work with organisations like the union movement, to work with the opposition and to work with businesses uh, and other members of society to get this right, because yeah. it's a once-in-a-generation opportunity and we've got to do it properly. Yeah, th there's a long way to go on this and there's a lot to talk about and there's broad issues of tax reform and labour market reform, but from what you're saying, you're accepting that, yes, on the way out of this, and that essentially means uh, starting now and the rest of this year, um, the Labor does agree that we should be focused on delivering some reform, some, some, some landmark economic reform. I think that there's an opportunity, Chris, for us to establish a platform for economic growth into the future. There's no, no doubt that the Australian economy has had a problem over, over recent times. Including taxation like, and industrial relations? Well, that, that's yet to be seen. Uh, it, there's no doubt that there's, there's been a problem uh, in the Australian economy in terms of productivity over yep. recent years. Um, and that's something that we believe we need to get right. And we don't think that doing things like um, providing only 24 hours notice of changes to enterprise agreements um, and the like is the right way to go about that because ultimately you're talking about trying to get cooperation in the workplace and if you're talking about complicated productivity enhancing reforms in an enterprise bargaining agreement it's often too hard to get the agreement of the workers in 24 hours so all it means is that the agreement gets voted down if the workers aren't confident about what they're voting in they'll vote no Yep. So you need to get the balance right, and that's got to be done in cooperation. And what we've seen from the government so far is that all they've done is come out and make these changes without consulting the union movement, without consulting workers, and that's why Labor's looking to disallow things like that when we go back to the parliament. All right, well, we'll, we'll keep talking about those issues. I want to bring you back to the coronavirus response, though. Do you support uh, what we've heard from Maurice Payne and from Peter Dutton, uh, that is that there should, needs to be an independent investigation of how China uh, dealt with this pandemic in the early stages and indeed where the, uh, actual, the virus came from. What's your response to those calls and the way Beijing has slapped them down? We do support those calls. Uh, there's no doubt that the coronavirus pandemic has been devastating for the international economy. Uh, it's been devastating for health outcomes in countries across the world. And we hope that this never, ever happens again. But to ensure that that is the case, it's reasonable for the international economy, uh, international community to ask the Chinese government about where the origins of this virus were, how it occurred, and importantly, how we can put in measures, in place measures to ensure that this doesn't happen again. So if you're going to get a workable vaccine, if you're going to make sure that this sort of thing doesn't happen again and do the damage that it's done internationally, we need a bit more transparency and accountability from the Chinese government about the source of it and working cooperatively with the international community to put in place measures 
to make sure it doesn't happen again. Spot on. Thanks for joining us, Matt. My pleasure, Chris. Cheers. Matt Thistlethwaite there, Labor MP for Kingsford Smith. Let's